All right, I am back again with another video that is also going to be not edited very much. Uh, sorry if y'all hate this. It's just so much easier for me, and there's so much I really want to talk about. I think it'll be easier for me to get more videos out there if I don't end up coming up with excuses to not edit. So, we're doing a twofer today. I'm still going to try and keep it relatively short and sweet, but we are looking at... Legacy Skullgrin and I'm uh, pretty sure Legacy uh, Iguanas. The two pretenders, modern pretenders that uh, I have. I did have Bomb Burst, which Diana was awesome and got me for Christmas, um, but I wasn't really feeling Bomb Burst that much after getting him, so uh, I no longer have Bomb Burst. But I do still have Iguanas and Skullgrin, and Skullgrin was also part of that gift, so yeah. And I, I I will say this now, I know lots of people have their gripes about Skullgrin, and I completely understand those gripes, I'm not saying they're wrong, but those particular complaints with Skullgrin don't really bother me at all. I actually like Skullgrin a lot, and I like Iguanas a lot, uh, but let's get right into it. So Iguanas, start with the little guy, is this little motorcycle thing, and this gun just kind of mounts on top. I kind of wish this could store somewhere else, but at the same time, he's a Legends or core, yeah, core class figure, so it's fine. But this just put off to the side in a sec. Uh, it's nicely painted. I like the uh, the detailing's really nice. I like the kind of coppery color that they used for a lot of the detailing, and then this red in the middle. It's a neat looking weapon that serves no real function. I know it's meant to combine with other weapons, which seems like a not great idea, but it is what it is. So put that off to the side. And now Iguanas proper is this little motorcycle, which um, I'm in agreement with a lot of people here. I think it's cool that they what they did with the uh, more modern percenters, where they kind of combined the shell with the inner robot. So they share some detailing and some general kind of transformation stuff. It's kind of why Skullgrin just turns into a bar of soap with guns on it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a cool motorcycle, and as you can see, it actually, because the wheels are kind of thick and flat, it actually can stand without the aid of a kickstand. It doesn't really roll without falling... Okay. It can roll without falling over, apparently. But yeah, uh, it's it's a cool little motorcycle that does obviously look a little bit like a uh, lizard man is holding the wheels because you've got the fist right there and the legs right there. But it's pretty successful for what it is, I think. It, it it does look like a robot twisted into the shape of a motorcycle, but it's cool. I like it. I'm gonna plug the gun back on top here for now so that we can put Iguanas off to the side and look at Skullgrin. And Skullgrin is, as I said, just kind of a kind of a bar of soap with guns on it. It it's fine. I really don't mind it. Um, I do kind of wish that certain things were done a little bit differently here. I like he's got the treads on the back but there are no treads or tread detailing towards the front, which means like it just I don't know. It's like where are the where are the wheels here? Is this like a hover tank up here and then actual threaded tank in the back? I don't know. It's kind of an ugly alt mode from the side with all this mess going on. You can kind of cover up what's going on here with the weapons, but if you remove the weapons which incidentally are made of flexi soft plastic for some reason. Uh, if you remove those, then that's kind of worse. And this covers it up just a bit. It's not the end of the world or anything, but it could have been better. Still, it's for what it is, it's fine. And this, as I understand it, is meant to more homage like the kind of non-vehicle that the core robot for Skullgrin's uh, pretender robot would turn into. So I get that. It's, you know, it's a Cybertronian tank. If Tarn can get a pass for being kind of nonsensical, I feel like this can get a pass for being a bit more nonsensical. But you do get the uh, turret rotation, so there's that. 
Also, I'm really curious to see, it's a bit of a tangent here, but I'm a little curious, or really curious to see how the Reaper label set goes over on this guy. I really want to get them for this guy, because I really like this figure. Uh, but yeah, he's just a big old mess, with his little head sticking through at the bottom there. And yeah, I don't know. As I said, it's not much in terms of a uh, vehicle mode, but I think it's fine. Now, let's get all of this over here so we can do our size comparisons real quick. I understand it's a little bit silly of me to do this when I don't have vehicles to size them with or compare them with, but eh, whatever. You all don't come to me for size comparisons, right? Okay, so there we have Skullgrin and Iguanas, and uh, yeah, they're average sizes, I guess. <laughs> Iguanas is a core class figure, Skullgrin is a deluxe class figure, and uh, it is what it is. I'm gonna move these out of the way, and bring this fellow in real quick. And yeah, that's uh, that's how they stack up. Now let us move on to transformation, and uh, we're gonna I think we're gonna stick with Iguanas first because he's the quickest. So transform Iguanas is gonna take the thing, uh, the gun off. I'm going to unpeg the obvious legs from the back here, and they peg in down here and up here. So I'm going to unpeg from the wheel and then unpeg from what will become the tail. Just unpeg that, and you can see there is the tab that pegs into that slot right there. Now, bring the leg up and rotate at the knee, bring the foot down and rotate at the ankle. And that is one leg done. Same deal here, just pop that open, and then pop this apart, bring it up, rotate it, bring it out, rotate it, and that is the lower body all done. For the upper body, I'm going to unpeg the fists from the wheel, and then untab the uh, underarms from these. Uh, there's these little, little hard to see tabs on the torso here that this gap in the forearm actually tabs, or in the bicep actually, uh, kind of tabs into, and that keeps the arms at this angle for pegging into the wheel. So untab that. Swing it down and get the arm in place. Same thing here. Untab, rotate, and rotate. Then going to deal with the uh, wheels in the back. So these are a little bit tricky to uh, remember how they go, but basically you want to just kind of follow where the ball joint gaps are. So like this has a gap here and it's kind of shifted this way more. So you want to rotate it up like that this rotate like that. Nope. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so this goes around like, no? Boy, I am I am just a hot mess right now. Okay. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I am sorry. Okay, so bring this down and rotate it up this way because, uh, this little gap here kind of goes around this here. And this rotates in and sits off to the side, and this whole assembly kind of comes together like a little puzzle with this curve here. So that is how you want to orient that. And you want these wheels kind of up over the shoulders. It's not that bad, and it's really pretty easy to figure out how they go when you're going into vehicle mode because the way things arrange, like, you really can't have this one rotated that way and this one rotated the other way. But, uh, yeah, who oh boy. <laughs> it is uh, a little bit confusing, I will give it that. Um, anyway, with that situated, can rotate at the waist to get the uh, legs facing the proper direction. I'm going to pull this up, and this actually does peg into place. There are some little tabs here that tab into the torso. And then pull this back. 
And this arm does actually click into place. So when you're going into vehicle mode, you want to push this all the way forward. And the little top of Iguanus' fin will sit in this notch up there. So you want to do that. Bring this down, and this gap will go over the uh, exposed ball. Bring this back up. And this will tab into these slots on the uh, wheel struts there. And it just uh, kind of keeps things from moving around too much. It's not like the most solid connection, but it does kind of hold the backpack in place. And there we have Iguanus in his tiny robot mode. And that's a, that's a nifty little transformation for a core class figure. And we will talk more about him in a minute. But we still have Skullgren to look at. So I'm going to take off the squishy guns. And there's a little notch here that these tabs sit in. So I'm going to separate that and unpeg these from the tread wheel, tread peg hole, whatever. Unpeg that. You can unpeg this entire section if you want, but it's really not necessary for the transformation. So I'm just going to leave it on. I'm just going to rotate these back a little bit to give me more room. Now, I'm going to unpeg the treads from the arms, and there's also a tab that sits in the uh, what is what will become the robot shoulder. So pull this out, and uh, here you can see the tab or the hole, and there's the tab that sits in there. So unpeg that, bring this down, and same thing on this side. Unpeg, bring it down. Now. Going to let's see. Okay. Going to separate the legs and accordion these up. Uh, these tabs in the hip or thighs rather tab into the shins there. So untab that, bring this down, and try and separate the legs. It's a little tricky. Can't remember if it slides or oh there we go. I was just being too careful. That's the problem. So separate the legs, and now there's a little... The tab the whole thing that pegged in there will now peg in here. Oh, that's... Okay. <laughs> there's a there's a dual hinge in there. I'm, I'm messing up so badly. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this will hinge up, and now this tab on the side here will actually slide into this little section here. And that will keep the uh, shin section together. And now this will rotate like so, collapse down, and actually before we do that, I want to get the foot down, and the foot actually tabs in right up here. This is a mess, I'm sorry. This tabs in there, so you untab that. Now bring this armature down and this will sit down here, and then this will tab in right here and kind of hold all that together. So that is one leg done, and actually while we're doing this, you can rotate the leg down because you want the legs kind of pointed forward for transformation. So with all that done, let's uh, unhinge this again and remember to actually do it right this time and get that up and into place. Keep that armature down and out of the way so we can unpeg the foot. Bring that down. Now rotate this, rotate this, bring this down and peg that in. And there we've got leg number two. Now we can rotate this hinge here to bring the body up. And from here, going to unpeg the arms. They actually peg in together, but there are these tabs here that peg into the biceps as well. So I'm going to pull that down. There you can see where they kind of peg in there. And now separate the arms and swing these out. I'm going to pop open the chest. Push that to kind of push it open from the other side. But yeah, pop open the chest. Start swinging this down. And as I swing that down, I'm going to take this and slide it up. So push this up and click that into place. That'll recenter the shoulders. Bring this down and peg that into place. Bring the cannons back up. 
I'm going to lift the head out of the way just so that I have the space to bring this panel back up. Close that. So you had to open it to get the head through. Uh, I'm going to rotate the cannons just so I can get a better view. Uh, flip up these little horns in the back. Flip out the side horns. Uh, rotate the biceps. Flip out the fists. Flip out the fists. Flip out. There we go. And... Come on. There we go. And we're almost done. There's just one more thing we have to do, and it is the most important step on the transformation of this figure. Flip down his little tail. And there we have Skullgrin in his robot mode, and this is a nifty, weird robot. Kind of along the same lines as Iguanas. They're both a couple of strange boys. But I like them. I like them a lot, actually. <laughs> Now, I mean, right off the bat, you can see Skullgren is noticeably larger. Though, in a way, I kind of think it almost works if you look at it as, like, pretender shell versus inter uh, internal robot size. That kind of that kind of works. But yeah, uh, these two are neat. I like the Decepticon pretender aesthetic. I like how they're uh, these kind of monstrous shells <laughs> and the robots like i'm kind of neither here nor there on the inner robots of the originals but like i like this i like the aesthetic that they've been going with for uh legacy it is neat and these guys are a pretty cool duo i will say uh iguanas in my mind is the more striking of the two visually skullgren has the really cool like you know demon skull head absolutely but just looking at them side by side, Skullgren almost looks kind of dull by comparison. I think it's just like the deeper colors, the golds and the reds on Iguanas that just works better. Though I will say, I've seen some customs of Skullgren with like a panel lining, like a wash on like the skull portions that looks amazing. So I might try something like that. I don't know. I still need to get the repro labels set for this guy though, so that may end up being a better option for me. We'll see. But yeah, these two look really cool together. And I appreciate how different they are. Uh, since Iguanas has been going first all the time, let's start with Skullgrin this time. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice color layout, but like the kind of darker purpley burgundy colors with the gray, they kind of bleed together a little bit visually. The white stands out really nicely, and I like the bright pink that they used for the eyes, but it is kind of a, a more drab color scheme in comparison to something like Iguanas. Proportionally, I think he's cool, though. He looks kind of stocky, which I think kind of works for a guy that's supposed to be like a demon skull monster thing. And I also think it's adorable that he has this little tail. And yeah, I don't know. It, it looks cool. Um, It's got knee spikes that I think it would have been cool if those were white to kind of go with the detailing on the shoulders and the horns, but it is what it is. And yeah, I don't know. It it looks really good. He's got very little in the way of kibble and gaps. Like He's got gaps on the back, but I feel like, you know, this stuff is understandable because of the mushroom peg and all that, and the underarms, like the underside of the forearms, I get why this has a gap here, because that's where the fists flip in and out of. And this is a deluxe, so I don't think they're really going to be giving him the fold-out panels to cover that stuff up. So I get it. It's not ideal, but it's fine, and also, it's only if you're really looking at it from that angle, so without it, it's fine. Now, this is kind of where the interesting duality of the design comes in because the chest as i understand it is designed to look like the inner robot but then you've got like the skull and the waist section with the skull belt and the spiky shoulders and stuff that's more designed to look like the shell so it's again like a hybridization of 
the original, like the interior figure and the exterior figure for the original toy. Uh, I, again, I think it looks cool, but it's a little drab, which is why I kind of want to get those Reaper labels. But I do appreciate the overall shape and design of this guy. And he also has a lot of accessory options, uh, which we'll get into in a sec, but I guess I should go over articulation real quick. Um, but before we do that, there is the demon head looking like something out of Doom. Take your pick which one. And it's cool. I uh, think it's weird that he doesn't have a lower jaw, but at the same time, he's like a monster robot, so he doesn't really need one. The only thing that kind of stinks is the ball cup on my figure is kind of off. So you can see if I try to straighten the head out, it will go straight, but like it kind of wants to snap to that to that side. So you got to be really careful and deliberate if I want him to look straight, which is unfortunate. But that said, I can get him to like look to the side without much problem. But then you can see how it kind of wants to snap back there. So you got to kind of push a little bit further, be careful with it. And yeah, it's just it's, it's disappointing that the head doesn't want to line up quite right on mine, but that's how QC goes. And as for posability, as you saw, it rotates, can look up and down. You can kind of tilt it a little bit, but not really. The arms go all the way around and can go out pretty much to the full 90, which is pretty nice. I like how the uh, horn and it goes just around the, that bit of the torso. You get a bicep swivel and a slightly over 90 degree elbow bend. No fist articulation. The waist can rotate. You will need to move the tail out of the way if you want to get more rotation, but it does rotate. The hips can go forward a little bit past 90 and can go back. Very stiff. You can go back pretty much to 90. I don't know why the rotation is so stiff on mine. Uh, it can only go out about that far, which I think is... Let me get rid of this and test this out real quick. I think that's because of the... Oh, nope. That's just as far out as they go. So yeah, you don't get the full, uh, the full splits. Oh well. Uh, you do get a thigh rotation, and then the knee can bend 90, and the foot can, well, it can wiggle back and forth, but not really for the articulation, but you do get pretty decent, <laughs> really decent ankle tilt. So he's pretty decently posable. Uh, not, not legacy tarn posable, but still pretty decently posable. Unfortunately, he does also kind of it kind of looks like he's sitting back when you're looking at him from the front. It's not really the case, but it just kind of gives that impression. There's something to do with his design. Now for his accessories, he's got his back cannons and tail thing, and also these things, which you can plug into a hand this way to act as like a sword, or plug into the hand this way to act as a gun. So you've got... <laughs> Pardon me. So you've got options there. Um, and then if you really wanted to, you could also unpeg... Oh, first you could unpeg this entire thing if you wanted to. And uh, well, I was going to say you could peg it into his hand, but you really can't because it doesn't really work that way. So never mind. But you can unpeg the individual back cannons. So you can unpeg those, leave him his little tail, unpeg these, and then if you wanted to, you could give him the back cannons as uh, as weapons. So he could hold those. You could plug these into his back in place of the back cannons. So now he's got these kind of like sword standard things, which looks pretty cool. Uh, if you wanted to, you could plug these into the tops of the guns, so it looks like he's got bigger guns. You can plug 
either of these into the shoulders if you really want. Which, uh, okay. The thing that I prefer to do with Skullgrin, personally, is uh, all of this unpegged and do all that stuff I did and peg these back in. You can tell what side the cannons peg into because this little cut here is designed so that the cannons can angle up. So that's how you know what side you have the cannons on. But I like to keep those plugged into his back and then for these guns I actually peg them into the forearm section here so that they're kind of an underslung uh, bladed gun thing which I think both looks cool as a weapon option, like that just looks neat, but also it kind of masks the gap in the back of the forearm, so I think that also works. So you got options. And let's get Skullgrin off to the side and bring in the little boy, Iguanus. And Iguanus also looks very cool, and as I said, I think actually more successfully, uh, he looks cooler than Skullgrin. And yet he's so much smaller. I think there's not a ton of paint on this guy, but what's there really stands out. Like the black on the gauntlets, the bronzish color on the knees, the kind of off-white on the waist, and then all of the coppery bronze red going on in the chest. There's only a little bit of paint on the face. It's the yellow for the eyes. Would have been cool if they painted the teeth, but oh well. And then of course you've got the detailing on the back here. And I really like these wheels that stick out over the shoulders. That's a cool detail. It does get in the way of articulation a bit, which we'll go over in a minute. But, you know, as you can see, you can still rotate the arms pretty freely. They just can't go back all the way or go back the other way around all the way. Yeah, I don't know. I think the proportions are really cool. I like the overall design colors on this guy. There's lots of really nice detailing, like the little toe claws the ridges and the shins, this kind of layered armored paneling in the thighs. It's just lots of really cool detail on this guy. And the face too, the head is also uh, hard to see, but it is really nicely detailed and shaped and doesn't have the ball joint issue that Skullgren has. <laughs> yeah, Iguanus is very cool. Now for articulation, the head can look up and down a little bit and can tilt side to side a little bit but really it's just for looking left and right you're not going to get a whole lot of uh, articulation other than that the arms can go out to pretty much the full 90 and as you saw can rotate almost all the way around but the wheels just get in the way uh, you get what acts as a bicep swivel because of the ball joint at the elbow and then that also gives you uh slightly more than 90 degree bend. No fist articulation, but it's a core class figure, so whatever. You get waist rotation, which is really, really stiff for some reason, but you do get waist rotation for the transformation. And then the hips can go forward to 90, though they do kick out slightly because of the shape of this thing here. And then go back about that far. That's that's as far back as they go. And go out further than Skullgrin. Not all the way, but they can go out for pretty far. Uh, they can go... Uh, you get 90 degree bend at the knee. And because the knee is a ball joint, it functions as a thigh rotation. And additionally, the hip ball joint gives you a little bit of rotation as well. And then the feet are actually on ball joints as well, so you can rotate the feet, you can go up and down a fair bit, and you also get ankle tilts. So he's got really nicely articulated ankles. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Iguanas quite a bit. He's like weirdly very poseable, and he just looks cool, even for a little guy. And once again, he has his weapon, which uh, you can store on his back in the same place it was stored in vehicle mode. So you can just peg that in there if you want to do that. Or you can give it to him as a handheld weapon, and in order to do that, 
Instead of using the thicker peg for the vehicle mode, use the much smaller peg, which pegs into either fist and gives him his little uh, whatever this is. So there is that. And let's bring Skullgrin back in here. So there are the pretenders in their robot modes. And again, as I said, I think they look really good together. I do still have my uh, gripes with Skullgrin, but I actually do like Skullgrin quite a bit. It mostly just comes down to some understandable limitations and some of the uh, deco being a little bit on the dull side. Now, in terms of how they stack up height-wise and bulk-wise, size-wise, whatever, uh, let's bring in Heartfire. And I inadvertently knocked one of the little blast effects off of Rotor Storm. Ah, he uh, accidentally took a shelf dive earlier, and he's fine, but he kind of knocked things out of whack. So I have to readjust that. Okay, there is Rotor Storm and Burnout. Let's get Iguanas up there and. Samus. So there are the boys with the other folks. And yeah, uh, that's how they stack up. Skullgrin, I would say, kind of sits a little bit, height-wise sits a little bit taller than a regular deluxe and a little bit shorter than a tall deluxe. All right. Get you all out of here. And... Because, of course, here we go. So that is how all of that sizes up. And that is it for Legacy Skullgrin and Legacy Iguanas. As I said many times, I like these boys a lot. Iguanas, in my mind, is the clear winner of the two if they had to go up against each other. But I still really like Skullgrin a lot. I think he does some interesting stuff. He's simple, he uh, has a really basic and what is that vehicle mode, but like the engineering is interesting. You know, I kind of like how the uh, legs have to point forward and the entire waist assembly hinges back into the torso. And I think it's cool how they manage to hide this enormous head by folding it up. So, yeah, you know, engineering-wise, I think Skullgrin's the more interesting of the two, but Iguanas is a core class. And, you know, Iguanas has the more successful robot at vehicle modes, so it is what it is. But again, I'm still happy to have both of them. Uh, that is enough about what I think on these two fellows. What do you all think of Legacy Skullgrin and or Legacy Iguanas and or Legacy Bomb Burst and uh, Fingers Crossed? Legitimately, fingers crossed that we get some uh, other modernized pretenders somewhere down the line, because I do really like what they did with these figures. I just hope they keep doing it, because it's interesting. It's different. I like different. <laughs> I'm so tired of rehashing G1 over and over. Uh, but whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And remember, toys are awesome, but, you know, don't get too worked up about it. Let's just try to be pleasant to each other. <laughs>